So the title of my talk is not notable enough, and I have to say that um, acknowledge Maud Gauthier, who's a postdoctoral student uh, who's working with the ACT network and has been with us since about January. And Maud um, has taken on with uh, passion uh, the project that we're calling Actopedia for ACT, which stands for Aging Communication Technology, which we're really fortunate is a seven-year project that uh, people here are involved in and has made it possible for some students to be here as well. So we're thankful for still public funding um, for uh, intellectual work and for what I think is hopefully radical and serious intellectual work. Um, and also the team of students um, Myriam uh, Durocher, uh, Fanny Valois Nadeau, uh, Constance Carrière Lafontaine, and Michelle Macklem, uh, amongst others, but they're the uh, Antonia Hernandez, uh, an international group, as you can tell, and a group working across French and English to try and make changes to uh, Wikipedia. So the title, Not Notable Enough, comes from um, something that I'll talk about. And I'm not going to be quite as lively as the previous speakers, so bear with me. Um, it's a um, paper that Maud and I are working on um, with um, the, the, the participants in the Actopedia project. And what we're thinking about is um, this. How many of you have not looked at Wikipedia? <laughs> no hands are up. How many of you have written for Wikipedia or created a wiki entry? One, two, three, four, five, six people. Excellent. So as I have learned uh, through my years of teaching, of course, Wikipedia has become an indispensable source of online information because of its ease of use and its reputation as a user-generated encyclopedia of shared knowledge. The critical role of Wikipedia for setting the terms of discourse or the discursive terrain for many subjects, I think, cannot be underestimated. For many of us, myself included, it is the first go-to point of entry for us when we're looking to find out about things. In April, we uh, found that there were 1,610,656 and I'm sure that's still the case, articles in French, and 4,854,172 in English. So uh, what we started with was wanting to boost and supplement uh, many of the articles that are written in French, but also work from the perspective of living in, uh, in Quebec. So again, thinking about Wikipedia as a territory, um, and contributions uh, being made to Wikipedia, it's sometimes hard to trace out who the contributors, contributors are, and this has a hiss. I think I have to get a tooth fixed. Um, but um, we were really concerned uh, with the number of uh, French language entries in fields and in, on topics that we cared about. So um, this sort of potential for, um, so Wikipedia is, often seen as what is uh, what Joseph Riegel, who's a Wikipedia scholar, termed an imperfect realization of a long-pursued vision for a universal encyclopedia. Its potential as a potential intellectual utopia has been noted many times in the literature. Uh, Van Gant, 2010, Saranta Vaden, 2012, Heider and Sinden, 2010, just to show you I do read things other than Wikipedia. Uh, um, have uh, noted how, uh, have made these same notes. So encyclopedias present, organize, and shape information. And they shape information in ways that I think exert control over how discourses of knowledge not only present content, but can take place. To quote Zimmer, mm -hmm. The encyclopedia's structure sets the very framework within which no the knowledge it means to impart becomes possible to attain. As a wiki, and wiki comes from a Hawaiian term, apparently wiki, 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 which means fast, fast, fast. Um, ostensibly, editing is open to anyone, provided you have, of course, the appropriate skills and the equipment. 
But Wikipedia is, of course, a space, not just an encyclopedia, but a territory for negotiation, contestation, and struggles, I think, over inclusion and exclusion. And for that reason, it offers, as well, a kind of ideal case study for understanding the politics of research and the construction of knowledge in our own digital period, if we can say that. In this paper, so, and that we're working on, and in the research that we're doing, and in the thoughts that we're having, and in the discussions that we have on a daily basis, and in the anger that we manifest after one of our entries gets deleted again, we want to contribute to the debates surrounding the idea of a participatory digital culture by taking you in. And if we've just had a kind of, if your totem animal might be the eagle, mine would be the mouse. I like to burrow into things and go close up. And again, thinking of methodology, there's different kinds of strategies. Statistics give you these overall pictures. And so I think our papers are hopefully going to complement each other well, because my tendency is to be interested in statistical patterns, but at the same time to also burrow in sometimes into sort of the minutia of things to understand how the logics of um, rules work which often create the representations that then we're left with. So we constructed, what we really wanted to do, as I mentioned, was to rectify representations of aging in both French and English on Wikipedia. But what this has become very quickly since January, and I have to say I'm not, we're again learning together, a research project that is really teaching us about the inner logics and workings of Wikipedia, and teaching me how not to take for granted what it is that I read on the internet. Not that I ever did, but you forget sometimes. So we wanted to redress the absence of writing on aging, in particular, from an aging studies perspective, from a humanities perspective. Because really, in, when we were looking at uh, uh, entries on aging, all we could find were these kind of positivistic uh, definitions of aging that really portrayed aging in only in terms of chronological time, uh, also drawing from particular kinds of articles that uh, were not thinking about aging in, a, in an expanded way. And I'll go more into that in a few, few minutes. But one of the most telling experiences it became a kind of boundary object for us that ended up revealing what the limits, in some ways, of how a kind of, back to policing, uh, policing may work on, in Wikipedia, was when we tried to create an entry for the Center for Women and Aging, WAM, from the University of Gloucester. It's a research center that was founded in 20, 2010, I don't know how many members it has exactly. It has at least six academic staff members. It has a number of students. It runs an annual summer school. It has a journal. It has community outreach programs. And it's written a document called the WAM Manifesto, a document that talks about the exclusion of older women from not only media representation, but from media industries, institutions, and tries to make a policy intervention as a manifesto into this realm and presents a rallying cry for uh, us to even begin to think about this. Now the WAM, you know, the center may not be exactly well known, but the WAM manifesto has been taken up, I'd be happy to say, in a 2013 document that was looking at the role and representation of women in the British media. It was even cited, and members of WAM were invited to contribute and were cited uh, to a, a commission run by a, someone from the House of Lords. So you would think that this kind of institution with maybe a short history, but a history nonetheless, involving a number of notable researchers and having already a kind of impact because of its manifesto in the public sphere, might be uh, a contender for an entry into Wikipedia. Well, we found this wasn't exactly the case. So what I want to talk about bef before I move into the particular case of WAM is step back a bit and talk about Wikipedia and public discourse and the question of power knowledge. 
So um, what we've come to understand, and again, methodologies aren't just things that we have that we then like find data and it's like a sausage grinder and we take our data and we churn it through this thing. Methodologies are inventions. They're human inventions. They're inventions for or the organization of knowledge. So when we've been thinking about Wikipedia and discourse, we've been also working with the idea of DARE, what we're calling discursive action research. We're going to use the word dire, discursive intervention research, but that sounded too negative and we wanted to be more upbeat. Laugh now. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, no, serious, serious. So we're trying to think th theoretically of the need to think about how discourses are not there just to be mapped, but also the need for intervention and action in these kinds of realms. We're also guided and are thinking through and using this as a way to theoretically contemplate debates in media studies that are happening on the differences between mediation as a concept and mediatization as a term that comes from uh, more the, the German uh, speaking sociologically influenced media studies tradition where there's been traditionally a kind of a rift but there's more and more of a a dialogue happening, and uh, one of the things that mediatization theory does talk about that's a little bit different than, say, w Raymond Williams, who's a famous cultural studies person, notion of mediation, is thinking through that media, uh, there's a kind of an intensification of forms of electronic distribution, the velocity of speed of, of media, um, that's uh, fundamentally transforming um, not just the way that information is being distributed, but the way that it's also being produced. So we see what we're doing as a form of, I guess, tactical mediatization, borrowing from, again, the idea of a French, uh, well, I think he was an anthropologist, actually, Michel de Sarteau, who thought of tactics as a way that people who are maybe not always in positions of power use um, kind of different kinds of strategies, well not strategies, tactics to deal with logistical administrative strategies, rules and regulations, rules of law that become set, set into place. So uh, we're also influenced again by Michel Foucault's concept of power and understand Wikipedia then as a kind of technical knowledge apparatus that reproduces and constitutes a kind of truth effect around different subjects, including the subject of age and aging. So when I talk about a truth effect, it's not to say that there is no methods of verification, but to point out that we have to think about how it is that truths are made in our societies and how things come to be seen as truthful. We have to think about the conditions that represent truth statements and the kind of force they have. And in the images that were shown by Mika earlier, we see the kind of power of numbers and we see the power of those graphs and we think of them when they're on that page as things that come to stand in for whole populations in a certain kind of way and cluster knowledge and present a certain force because of the modes of their own representation. And I think as students, all of us, one of the kind of powerful things you can do, and here there's a tie-in because I think methodology is vitally important. Method, uh, having an interest in methodologies and how knowledge is produced, including your own, can open up your eyes to saying not only uh, accepting facts that are given to you, but being able to question deeply and profoundly how they're generated. So how is Wikitruth founded? What is the constitution of Wikitruth? is really important to note is Wikitruth is founded on a set of rules that are put forth by something called the Wikipedia community that aren't quite laws. They're not laws that if you break them or violate them, there's a criminal code that will call you forth before court. But there is a set of procedures and there is a set of ways that um, um, if you're going to participate in Wikipedia as an editor, and for those of you who've edited, you know this, there are policies they're guidelines, and they're also called pillars, as in pillars of knowledge, I suppose, that when you participate, you're asked to live up to. Um, and they kind of develop into a kind of set of procedures that allow and set the framework for what can be said. 
Now, one of the interests, one of, which sort of brings us to the question of gender and age, again, in terms of who is creating this kind of knowledge, using the guidelines and policies, and following the pillars. So as you can see, um, some of the statistics that have been collected, and statistics always make you sound like you've done your research, so here I will include them and also include a decimal point for effect. 12.64% of the contributors and 30% of the readers, according to uh, United Nations studies that done in 2010, indicate that Wikipedia re editors and readers are young. 25% of the editors are under 18. 25% are between 18 and 22, while another 25 are between 22 and 30. So 75% of the contributors writing content for Wikipedia are under the age of, are between, um, are under the age of 30. Now, I don't think this is terrible, and in fact, it gives me, <laughs> I think it's heartening to some extent to see that in a certain way that your generation is taking an interest in thinking about how to make knowledge public, and also, um, also intervening and contributing to these encyclopedia entries. What can be a little bit more difficult <laughs> um, for myself and others is to think, well, who is not participating and asking why. So, you know, again, we see um, that there are uh, really uh, big gender differences here that only 12.64 of those contributors are women, and 30% of the readers of Wikipedia, they say, are women. So there's other studies. In fact, Wikipedia does its own surveys of who contributes. Its editor's survey report in 2011 uh, found the slightly different data, but still not uh, well, statistically probably significant, but not over the top different, that the average age of editors is 32 that half, or 50%, are under 28, and that 22% are between 28 and 40, and that 28% are 40 years old and over. They also asked editors why they were contributing. And what they found when they asked this question was that older editors start contributing because they feel they know something about a subject that is poorly covered, whereas the younger editors wanted to, said they wanted to demonstrate that they knew something. And they wanted to do that to a wider public, and they also wanted to learn new skills. So Wikipedia is seen then as a site that provides an opportunity not only for making a contribution, but also as an opportunity for learning. Those who've asked the question of why are the, there significant gender differences in terms of Wikipedia will talk about women's dislike of conflict and preference for collaboration, lower confidence levels, and that's about as far as it goes. What they do acknowledge, and I think this is important, is that Wikipedia culture can be very rules-driven, and one can very quickly find oneself being reverted and blasted on their user page for overstepping a rule that you were unaware of. And indeed, we found this to be true when we overstepped, not in all cases again. You know, again, thinking about Wikipedia and why intervene, particularly around age and gender, other researchers who are from library studies have looked at the content of Wikipedia because again, just because you're young doesn't mean that you're, you're ageist, or because I'm old, I can't necessarily understand uh, what is in the minds and, uh, and hearts of so-called youth. Again, these questions uh, around whether or not we buy into a kind of what I would call age essentialism are incredibly important for us to think about and can't be, I would hope not to be generalized too quickly. But what we do find, again, is that uh, in terms of gender, that um, most of the articles in Wikipedia that are about females, women, are biographical and that there's a huge number of other subjects uh, missing. But that, in terms of Wikipedia, and when they compared Wikipedia to Encyclopedia Britannica, they found that Wikipedia had more articles on women in absolute terms, but fewer types of articles that included discussions of women. So um, again, the percentages are 
20% of the articles in Wikipedia are specifically about uh, women, at least in terms of biography. Other issues related to gender on Wikipedia. Sue Gardner, who was the former executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation, has a blog where she talks about the Wikipedia culture as being one that, for her, created a climate of intimidation. Um, but also that, particularly this was the case for people who did not have the time to vigilantly watch and safeguard the entries that they were making. So what happens if you do have a successful Wikipedia entry is that, of course, because it's a community and it's open to transformation, it can be changed. So what has been happening, uh, and uh, in discussions with uh, age study scholars like Margaret Mon Morgan Roth Gallette, who tried to make interventions on uh, entries on aging uh, on Wikipedia from a humanities-based perspective that was adding other entries that were not just based on a biomedical definition of what it means to be either young or old, found was that after she had done all this work to include this, new, this other perspective, that her entries were being systematically deleted and erased uh, and questioned. And she gave up, which is why it takes more than one person and collaboration and I think teams to do the kind of work that needs to be done. Again, uh, a really interesting site called Live Science um, published an article also confirming that women's pages in particular undergo aggressive editing. There's also a site called Wikipediosity, which uh, addresses what they call the tragedy of the wiki commons and the kind of aspirations that Wikipedia has to be encyclopedia and include a whole variety of positions and perspectives and what can go wrong, really trying to document, I think, some of, the, some of the challenges, as well as news outlets such as The Guardian have reported problems, uh, again, using specific examples, such as the Gamergate example, which was the example of um, an attack on a female gamer named Zoe Quinn, who was making a game that was an alternative uh, uh, learning educational game called Depression Quest, um, and was subject to attacks where details of her sex life were posted online, as well as she became the target of harassment and uh, death threats, and ended up couch surfing with friends, and from what we know, she still is. Uh, again, Anita Sarkeesian, a well-known figure in this controversy, has become also subject to th these kinds of threats. So again, in entering into wiki, wiki space, and I don't want to dissuade any of you from doing that, you know, you have both these kind of case studies and these instances, but also a sense when you're looking at this of sometimes how careful you might have to be, particularly if you're a woman, trying to uh, involve and engage yourself in this culture. But I still think it's important that it's done, of course, and have some advice for you about what not to do that I have done, like use your own name. Um, and in fact, that's one of the tactics that are used quite often by um, certain people who would rather not have the inclusion of, the, of work on uh, young women or by young women or older women on Wikipedia is that they tend not to use their own names and they're really quite clever at disguising their identities, which means that accountability becomes in some ways and dialogue and discussion can become quite difficult. It also means your entries can be questioned. And uh, because if you use your own name, one of the mantras of Wikipedia is that to have an entry up and have it asserted as notable, you have to not be implicated, you must be distant, which raises whole realms of discussion about where expertise lies in Wikipedia. Does it lie? in your knowledge of a subject, or does it lie in your ability to negotiate and understand the rules? 
So uh, again, I want to return then to the question of age and aging on Wikipedia. So in terms of content and perspective, our, we did an, an initial inventory of both English and French language entries and showed that there was a preponderance of medical or health-related perspectives, especially in the main entry portals to, on aging, or vieillissement in French, virtually no discussion on the lived experiences of age, aging in culture or aging in humanities. If you, as a young person, turn to Wikipedia to learn about aging, you would find details about cellular destruction, uh, senescence. You would find information on the biological basis of aging. You would find information on how to prevent aging, as if it was a disease. You would find some information on the social impacts of aging, predominantly negative. You would find information and statistical diagrams indicating that an aging population is having deleterious effects on the economy and the healthcare system with giant pyramids looking like they were going to crush incoming cohorts, what Stephen Katz calls the replication of alarmist demographies and decline narratives. Although a few articles had opened a space for alternative uh, perspectives, including articles on ageism, most of the perspectives came from particular disciplines, including gerontology, geriatrics, disengagement theories, there was discussions of life expectancy, elder care, terms that have become rife within the aging studies field that have been problematized, like active and successful aging were there, as well as anti-aging. So it was a really limited sphere of kind of understanding. We tried to include, I think we've got them, and we also modified um, terms that existed, um, creating new articles on the topics that you see here. And also we decided to produce new core entries on aging studies and the culture, and in French, les cultures de vieillissement, in the aim of creating a new form of new discursive networks around them that would challenge this kind of purely biomedical uh, reductionism of what, of what it means to become old. And you're all aging. We're all aging. So we didn't have, at first, that many problems. For example, you know, there was some minor irritations. When we tried to include the entry activist aging, it got redirected immediately by other editors into the submission on activity theory, a theory according to which successful aging occurs when older adults stay active and maintain social interactions. So redirects are used when topics are the same or deemed to be almost the same. The redirection of the term activist to this kind of realm of physical activity indicated, of course, that the editor who intervened knew nothing about the topic. So again, one of the things that I would be really, again, I think that it really is important to engage in uh, the digital realm, to be quite frank, um, because of uh, the incredible, uh, not just statistics, but because I think of the kind of cultural weight that it has. But I think, again, being mindful and attentive to what it means to make those kinds of changes is a skill we have to learn. And again, to go back to the discussion yesterday, um, uh, thinking about how rules of law are set into order that become, are confused, or become seen as rules of law when actually their, their guidelines that have been inventions are incredibly important to understand. But as well, one of the challenges, I think, for uh, all of our generations at this point is not only the collection and accumulation of materials, but as well, thinking about how you're going to learn to read and filter the information that's put out into these kinds of zones. So when we, the real trouble began when uh, in March we put up our entry for WAM. And again, you know, learning to be an editor on Wikipedia is a learning process and I, ex we, I, I accept criticism and I, my team accepts criticism. But immediately uh, within basically uh, I think it was hours, Mode came running into the office upset and said, Kim, we've been noted for deletion. And this was the first time I think it had happened, almost immediately. So 
it did become uh, the uh, the charge was this. Let's see if I have that on. Nope. There is no coverage in reliable non-affiliated sources. All sources are affiliated except for Zwoll, Carp, Jones, and Whiting. However, the Zwoll and Whiting references are blogs, not a WP colon RS. While the Carp ref doesn't even mention the center. This leaves the Jones ref, which is quite literally from a tabloid and doesn't really establish notability due to not being on RS. Therefore, due to the lacking of notability establishing sources, we should delete this article, Grognard, Editor 1, Talk, Penguin Replying, 13, colon, 3, 27, March, UTC. So, what is notability? This is central to thinking about how knowledge is allowed to be uh, put onto Wikipedia. Wikipedia articles should not exist only to describe the nature, appearance, or service, for example, of a website or a research center. And again, one of the problems on the English language side in particular is that there's no discussions of research centers. So again, thinking about to these terms, like are we living in a digital individualist culture? Well, in a certain sense, Wikipedia, like many other news sources is replicating um, notions that it's biographies of individuals that are becoming predominant and are important. Although what you can also have a, a course on Wikipedia are, sec, um, are uh, concepts. Research centers or organizations or collectives are a little bit more difficult, it would seem, for the wiki editors and the community to get their heads around. So you should describe your site if you're doing a website, for example, in an encyclopedic manner, offering detail on achievements, impact, or historical significance, which can be significantly more up-to-date than most reference sources, since Wikipedia claims we can incorporate new developments and facts as they are made known. So that's notability is also about then having proper references, but also making sure that people are not involved and are so-called have some sense of distance. So the idea here, and I think it is important, is staving off what they call narrow group interest. And to meet notability requirements, articles have to be based on third party, non-affiliated sources with some degree of editorial overview coming from the Wikipedia community, which is then seen as a guarantee of neutrality and quality. And apparently this is going to help stave off the use and the deterioration of Wikipedia into the realm of just self-promotion or advertising. So again, what's interesting is the reliance on secondary sources as the primary source material and evidence within Wikipedia. Which is interesting when you come to the contributions being made by research communities like WAM or research communities like RECA, Respecting Elders Communities Against Abuse, another organization I work with in Montreal, which we also tried to create a wiki page for and with, which was also deleted. It's an organization of 10 um, women and men from Montreal's cultural communities who have been working to prevent elder abuse using Augusto Bois's uh, Theater of the Oppressed, but they have a membership of well over 100 members. They have an active website, and they have done significant things. We thought, again, they were notable, but apparently not notable enough, like Wham, because they are not written about in the primary media, and there are no academic articles to date, except mine, um, which uh, apparently also wasn't quite enough because I'm affiliated to RECA. So again, you're kind of caught in this conundrum. Things you care about and changes you want to make mean that even though I have expertise and knowledge of, uh, of RECA, I'm not a member of WAM, but WAM is affiliated to ACT. Um, there's, and also, I guess I'm seen as a feminist. I wonder why, um, means that in some ways the, there's charges that there's a non-neutrality which questions whether or not this is of, important, of import. And again, there's a distinction made in the discussions of notability saying notability really isn't about fame and notability isn't really about importance, which makes you ask what is notable? Well, again, it's just based on these rules, uh, adequate referencing, neutrality and distance. 
is, is extraordinarily important. But in a certain sense, what becomes also important is evidence from secondary sources because primary source material is seen, you cannot put your own kind of article on, which again, they're looking for validation that this is important enough. So we've been in the second round of trying to get these done and uh, actually putting better references according to what we thought their logic was, finding sec secondary sources. We were then accused of the terrible crime of being blog spotty, a word I'd never heard of before. And again, the uh, media outlets that we were using were deemed not good enough and tabloid, again. Um, not generated by, about the organization, but by, again, researchers working with the WAM team. The problem is, of course, is that collectives or research centers or organizations of older women in Montreal who are doing significant things in their community and may not have worldwide press coverage but are significant, I would say, nonetheless, with significant making interventions into their communities and contributions do not often get written about. Uh, research centers are often more of a springboard for publications about specific topics. It's their members often members of the research centers who get quoted in the media, because it is whom journalists seek out for quotation. So again, if you do belong to an organization that you think, and that you want to show that, again, Wikipedia is more than just a collection of individual biographies or a series of concepts or discussions and debates uh, within a certain kind of disciplinary realm, but you want to include the um, other kinds of uh, organizations that you may belong to or, or think are notable because of the work that you do, something important to remember is that every time you are interviewed that you mention that organization and their contribution. So again, what is important, I think, is the importance of media visibility for establishing notability, which points to the question of Wikipedia's inadvertent participation in a culture of what Andy Wernick would call of promotion and celebrity, despite the fact that they say that notability is not equivalent to fame. So for example, and I am a Montreal Canadiens fan, so I say this with a heavy heart, every member of our hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens, including the most recent person, 19-year-old recruit from the Netherlands, Jacob De La Rose, is in Wikipedia. Getting into the media becomes important, not whether what you do is of import and has a history, for example, longer this, than this individual hockey player's professional career. It brings into the question of what constitutes reality within Wikipedia, for example. So Mickey Mouse is more real and notable than an organization like WAM or RECA in wiki terms. It is entry into this other, these other discursive realms, the realms of academic writing, and second, so that secondary sources can be cited, or entry into the media being the subject of a secondary source that makes you notable. So um, again, trying to address the question of blog spotty, the, the, and blog spottiness, which makes it sound like we all had pimples. Um, the privileged sources on Wikipedia, as um, uh, Luit has shown, are other websites, news outlets, governmental sites, university pages that are easy to read and understand, and as Luit says, may not always meet what we would see as academic standards. He's, he, uh, to quote Luit, an argument could be made that we have in Wikipedia a situation that is even worse than it existed in the time of the purely printed encyclopedia if we can, and when we consider that these summaries relied so on so heavily by Wikipedia editors already represent the congealed consensus of the institutions that are hosting them. Their very nature as summaries leaves little room for a contextualization of the debates and arguments that would have originally attended the creation of this knowledge. He also addresses, and I think our experience has borne this out, the potential for the neutral point of view 
to limit the range of expert opinion called on, and therefore to reduce the inclusivity of Wikipedia. Indeed, only a few of the experts from the outside community are ever actually deployed, and many voices that could serve Wikipedia well are not utilized, which represents an impoverishment of the potential of the encyclopedia and a limitation. And a, and a limitation. So one thing that I do think is different to note, and again, this is other researchers, um, including um, Regal have pointed out that Wikipedia entries do tend to be longer than uh, traditional encyclopedia entries. There's no uh, actual formal, formal limit but, limit, but there are indications of how to write for the genre, and they give you lots of instructions on this. But what is of concern, and one of the examples Lloyd uses, is how the expertise of the wiki community itself, who do not have expertise in the content but in the rules, can contribute to uh, real problems in particular areas. And one of the examples that he cites is the history of the Philippines, um, which didn't bear any resemblance, apparently, to the history of the Philippines, but stayed on for an awful long period of time. So, um, let me just through here. So what's really important is not only being an expert in terms of content, but really uh, being aware of the rules of the game. But even if you are aware of the rules of the game, what becomes interesting is the, insist is the inconsistent application of rules for things like notability, particularly for areas like research centers that we were trying to put forth. We found older entries with poor, when we tried to debate the question, we found older entries with poor referencing, which we used as examples. Um, but when we tried to debate this and also ask questions about the expertise of those who were contending with our descriptions and discussions, we were accused of having bad faith. So what happens is that what you need to do is to become, to establish wiki truth, not an expert in your content because you're also not allowed to canvas. So indeed, when we uh, were trying to sort of say, listen, this is notable, and we would want to bring in our outside community to give credence to this, we realized that there was a rule against what was called canvassing from uh, outside sources. So really, you get confined to this kind of very, very internalized group of rules and regulations and also uh, the community of other Wikipedia enter editors. And what you have to do is co continually work to reestablish your own credibility within that universe in order to be able to uh, indicate that you are um, uh, uh, willing to go to the next letter level of editorship to be able to uh, be part of this kind of discussion, but also monitor. So what we really noticed was, again, that any time that we were beginning to um, include entries like that had the word feminism or women in it, that there seemed to be a much trolling going on to determine whether or not um, the, uh, the, the referencing could be deleted. So wiki truth is grounded in rules that are supposedly achieved by consensus and are up for discussion. But in the case of WAM, they were applied always as very strict rules and not just guidelines and applied à la lettre. This truth is held up by the members of the Wikipedia community, wiki experts, who are able to use acronyms and abbreviations with a plum to create arguments for inclusion. An expert is not an expert in content necessarily, but an anonymous person who knows the rules very well, which does not take into consideration the notion of expertise on the topic at hand. So one important aspect of Wikipedia is therefore how to acquire the expertise that one needs to become a member of the community to play a part in determining consensus. So in conclusion, while Wikipedia may be the first go-to place for many people, including myself, take heed. Truth and expertise are evaluated according to a, di a very different logic than they are in academia. 
Well, maybe, well, and that's something that we can also discuss. How different are, are these? Are these diff just different close, so, series of closures and ways of monitoring how it is that we create truth effects? The series of entries we created and modified over the six months of duration of our project, we think has contributed to shifting certain kinds of hegemonic discourses on aging, but it has not been a straightforward experience. We believe that Wikipedia is an important platform for knowledge sharing, and that we also agree that having guidelines is important and not without merit, and we understand the need for not making, making sure that it's not just a promotion of one own, one's own individual pet project, I suppose. On the other hand, it seems that around the notion of consensus, there, there are, is certain, there are certain um, kinds of activities that are absolutely never questioned. We know that academic referencing is welcomed when it comes to articles about social phenomena. We know that there's less articles, particularly in our case, around particular kinds of organizations of activist elders or activist and feminist groups who we think are making significant contributions to culture and who are notable. Our experience, nevertheless, indicates how aging and culture outside of the dominant discourse can also really be readily understood as a niche or narrow interest. So when we decided that what we wanted to do as well to establish a, what's called a sandbox in Wikipedia terms, so that we could create a larger international or national group or whoever wanted to participate of people interested in the articulation between aging and culture, again, Immediately, we had a comment that came on that said um, that, um, that this was just a niche topic. So we had to, again, argue ourselves out of that one. Again, not a problem. And again, it just means that you have to be ready, willing and able to consistently um, uh, be ready to make those arguments. And one of the ways that it becomes possible to do so uh, in ways that I think are not just one where you feel you're under individual attack, is by establishing collectives and communities of people engaged in the same activity. So the specificity of our attempt to create an entry for WAM indicates how Wikipedia's entries are not neutral and also raises problems for the dissemination of knowledge of aging. Some persons and organizations are more readily and immediately suspect and their notability will be immediately put into questions. WAM's immediate and ongoing deletion is an indicator of the problem and the challenge of getting women, the organizations they found, into the media and sharing knowledge produced from a critical point of view. Thank you. <laughs>